so far. We also have a health alert for you. How's your hearing? Huh? Yeah, there you go. Lots of things affect your hearing, from the use of cell phones to iPods to the medicine you're taking to the subways you ride on. A health alert. Things could be damaging your hearing that you might not even be aware of today, this morning, coming up in a few minutes. And these I have bees that we have to always have in our ear. That, that if we you have, have pumped up. down yeah. a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's all right. If it's too loud, no, it's bad for you. Anyway, we're going to have some important health advice on how to save your And now, protecting your hearing. Some 30 million baby boomers do indeed suffer from hearing loss in this country, a figure that is risen more than 200% since the early 1990s. It is going up a lot more because age has a lot to do with this. But the noise around us every day can also cause significant damage. Dr. Michael Seidman is an ear, nose, and throat specialist. He's from the Detroit area. His book, Save Your Hearing Now, is full of good tips on, on doing just that. He's here to share some of us with us. Dr. Seidman, welcome. Thank you very much. Now, I have noticed it. I'm a baby boomer. I, I've noticed it. My friends said, what? They do a lot of that. I do it. This is a natural process part of it, right? It is, absolutely. And people start to realize that they're missing out. It's very subtle, very slow, but it happens and it creeps on us before you notice it. And, and when does it start? At what age, roughly? I say it starts from when you're born, but really yeah. probably 35, 40 is when people start to pick up on it and start to realize I'm missing out a bit and I'm not hearing my wife, I'm not hearing my spouse. So it happens naturally anyway. Are we hastening this? By, this, by our modern technology, cell phones, iPods, stereos in our ears, all that stuff. Absolutely. It's, it's a huge problem. The personal lis listening devices, for example, register 120 decibels when they're turned up loudly, can damage the uh, inner ear tremendously. Just the routine environment outside, uh, jackhammers, people walking down the street uh, in New York, it's just so noisy on the street. Uh, it's incredible. You okay. walk by a construction project like this, a hammering, all that... It's, uh, I feel bad for the people working there, and I also feel bad for the people who are, who are walking by because it's very noisy. I've been to a couple concerts recently, and I, I have to tell you, I, the next day I didn't like it. I, I didn't like you, the ring. I hope you wore your earplugs there. I've been to a couple concerts recently, and I have to tell you, the, the next day I didn't like it. Well, it's, you, you get a muffled feeling, yeah. you get a ringing sensation, and you've damaged your ears probably permanently. Okay. And it adds up. It's, uh, it's, uh, aging doesn't happen overnight, neither does hearing loss. So tell me some of the tips. I know that iPod has put out uh, what's a, a noise level, right, to, to make sure it, it maximizes out a certain level for kids especially. Yeah, well, we, we, uh, my kids also wear, wear their uh, listening devices and uh, listen to the personal audio systems just way too loud in, in the cars, everything that you can imagine. And if you can hear it, if you're next to them and you can hear it, which I can always do that with yeah, my yeah, kids. Yeah, it's bad for them. It's very bad. And, uh, you know, they'll say, oh, Dad, I'm turning them out this way. And, and I'm saying, it's still bad. You're directing the sound inside, and you're going to be deaf by the time you're 40 or 45. And I'm going to be selling you a hearing aid. I have a good friend who is, is really anal about this, and he takes earplugs for his children everywhere, on a plane, in a car, everywhere. We kind of laugh at him, but we shouldn't laugh at him. He's a brilliant man, and uh, I bring up my, my wife actually wears earplugs when she blow dries her hair, and I bring them to hockey games, to uh, basketball games, and to the arenas where it's incredibly noisy, and uh, um, you don't see many people doing them. The noise sticks, that, that's just deafening, and so I wear earplugs too. I, I have to say this for the record. Peter, I'm sorry, I will never call you anal again. You're brilliant, <laughs> according to Dr. Seidman. Um, I went to the subways once, uh, in New York subways, for, for our local station here, WABC, and tested the sound of the subway. And now, because of that, I always go like this when the subway goes by. That's up to 105, 110 decibels. I, I have parents who come in and say, little Johnny, little Jimmy does this when a siren goes by, and I say, smart kid. And some people are more sensitive than others, but it is smart when a siren goes by, when 1 o'clock and they're testing the emergency broadcast system, plug your ears. Um, it's very important to protect what we have. I found it very helpful to have what, what I see you have over there, a little monitor. Ah, it yes. Measure the decibels. And I was surprised at what happens everyday life, what you hear. Oh, it, it's incredible. And this just helps you. I've been walking around. I was on an airplane yesterday, and you, it's amazing how loud uh, routine things are. The, the air conditioning unit next door doesn't sound that loud, but it's about 105 decibels. The dog barking next door, jet skis, it's, uh, it's incredible to see uh, what you have. And anything over 85 decibels is damaging to your ears. And we're simply not aware of it, are we? We are not. And your suggestion would be wear your plugs. Look at that. We have the numbers up there. And, and look at that. Who, who knew this? Even a vacuum cleaner at 75 decibels, you don't want to be around that all the time. You don't. And it's, it's uh, slow and it's progressive, but it happens. And the louder sounds are even more scary. I mean, we, we know we're sending people home from uh, the military for... With damaged ears. Big, big time. Dr. Simon, some good tips. Thanks. I'm going to pay more attention. You can read an excerpt, by the way, of Save Your Hearing at abcnews.com. So... Exactly what does your favorite flavor say about you?